And now we have the final speaker of the morning. <laughs> yes. We can still hear. So, Christian Serre, who is a specialist of, of course, metal organic framework and is uh, now heading the Institute of Porous Materials uh, between uh, ENS and ESPC. And he's going to talk about organic frameworks for energy related applications. Okay, thank you, Jennifer, for the kind introduction. And thank you, Clément, for this kind invitation and the very nice workshop. So, I'll start. So, today I will give a talk, uh, not a review, but focus on a specific application related to energy, and in particular, the relationship between MOF and water. Of course, uh, the main, uh, let's say, the first big achievement in the field of MOF were obtained uh, at the end of the 90s, early uh, 2000s. So uh, most of the material that were discovered at this stage were based on uh, metal two, so divalent cation zinc and uh, uh, copper, for instance, so we have two representative examples of a famous structure, MOF5 and HKS1. But these materials were rapidly uh, uh, being observed as being unstable to water, especially MOF5, and created a lot of problems for the community because industrial partners, they consider us all MOF being unstable and so not worth for most application. Since that, uh, considerable progress has been made in chemistry to substitute these metal two uh, ions by higher valence, uh, let's say, cation, of course, to increase the strength of the metal ligand bond, and therefore with plus three, uh, plus four uh, cation, like, uh, for, for instance, aluminum, iron, to, let's say, titanium and zirconium, uh, the, the material become much more stable. I would not say that they become all Allothermally stable, it is not the case, it is much more complicated than simply coupling higher charge and ligand. There are other parameters, hydrophobicity, for instance, you can have the accessibility of the metal ligand bond, uh, which can be hindered by some groups that will stabilize the structure. The number of functional groups per organic spacer also counts a lot. But let's say that you can find some architecture that are at least stable enough for the application that you are looking at. So that's the first part. The second part, now that if we can access to this water-stable material, uh, what, are, uh, what is the relationship uh, between these water-stable material and water? How can you tune the interaction with water molecules? Uh, so you have several ways. So of course, you can introduce some Lewis or basis uh, of uh, acidity by having, um, for instance, once you have removed the coordinated water molecule, you can have unsaturated uh, metal sites on the top right here. Uh, or you can have, uh, for instance, in this, uh, the second example, you can have chains of, uh, uh, let's say, metal polyhedra, and then between these chains, sometimes you have uh, branch state acid groups that can be more or less acidic. And then, of course, you can use a ligand from the MOF to introduce some specific acidic or basic groups, such as a sulfonic group here. Uh, in this case. So you can tune the, the, the acidity of the, of the framework. At the same time, of course, you can tune, which is very important for uh, tuning the interaction with water, the uh, hydrophilic, hydrophilic hydrophobic balance. So this is an example, but you, can, uh, you have many other examples. You have uh, the simplest linker of MOF chemistry, so terephthalic acid on the left, but here, and then you can have sub a substitution of one of several hydrogen from um, the aromatic uh, group by polar or apolar groups. So this is quite interesting. For instance, with, for instance, with the CF3, so the perfluor group, you can have materials that are very selective for the absorption of acetic acid to protect, for instance, uh, cultural heritage from uh, degradation in the presence of water. So it means that, of course, you can have many types of structures. Uh, and so you can tune the, 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 the structure, the pore size, and so on but also with this possibility of tuning the acid character and also the hydrophilic, hydrophobic bands, you can have a, a very versatile environment to interact with water. And especially if you have acidic groups, you can have strong interaction with the water molecule. For instance, in this MOF, you have Lewis acidity. So Lewis acidity means that the coordinated water molecule, they have some branch state acidity. And therefore, you start to create a network of halogen bonds and as in the same time you have a part in the, in the material that are hydrophobic, in fact, that do not like water, so you force the water to be located in certain parts of the porosity. 
And therefore, you can have some what we, we can, like S-shape isotherm. This is a water sorption isotherm of this mesoporous material. So this is quite interesting because it means that you can adsorb and desorb water within a relatively short uh, partial pressure of water. In this case, there are two steps because there are two cages. But if you have only one cage, you will have only one, uh, um, let's say, S-shape isotherm. Uh, but more generally, uh, you can more uh, easily uh, find material that where you have a preferred percolation uh, pathway for the conduction of the protons, which can be interesting not only for uh, water sorption or desorption, so many applications related to, for instance, dehumidification, fresh water production, cooling system, heat pumps, and so on, but also for applications related to, uh, uh, let's say, fuel cells, such as having materials for proton conductivity. So the first part will be to give you some example of uh, recent strategies that we employ to uh, have material that could be an uh, interesting candidate uh, as a membrane for fuel cells. So I will be short on this part because I think uh, there were some uh, previous talks dealing with, uh, let's say, uh, uh, this type of fuel cells. I would just say that in our case uh, here, we're interested to have material for the membrane. So there are two types of application, low temperature, so where you involve water as the, the way to, to, to have this conductivity. So this is a low temperature, below 100 degrees C. And then you have higher temperature between 100 and 200, when this time you do not use water, but you use some protic molecules uh, like the imidazole, for instance. So in my case, we focus only on the first situation, so with water as the media of conduction. So there's a lot of criteria for, let's say, the, to have um, a good uh, solid electrolyte. So of course, the high proton conductivity, which is the first thing that people investigate for this type of application, but also many other parameters when you go to higher level of application, for instance, mechanical resistance, shaping, of course, interfacial properties, and so on. And of course, at the end, the material has to be cheap, scalable, and durable. And in the literature, the, the benchmark is, uh, the, is the polymer, is nafion. So nafion has, a, uh, let's say, a C that's a perfluoro, uh, it's a perfluorinated polymer. But at the end of this uh, chain, you have a sulfonic group. So it is a quite amphiphilic uh, polymer. And this material has a very good selectivity. It is already used uh, for some application. Uh, but the problem is that it suffers from a fast degradation, and uh, not relative fast, but some degradation after cycling and it's difficult to recycle. So a lot of people are trying to find alternative material for this type of application. Uh, so not only MOF, uh, but other type of solid that are acidic. So in the past five, 10 years, many groups in the world have uh, investigated uh, uh, the MOF as possible candidates for uh, proton conductivity membrane. So I will just give you a few uh, examples that are uh, representative. So one of the first example is to introduce some acidic groups, such as sulfonic group, on a water-stable MOF. So here, this is a chromium dicarboxylate system based on an aftalane linker where you have some sulfonic group. So the conductivity is relatively high, the same, same order of magnitude, a little bit better than nafion. But as you know, chromium is a quite toxic material. And then in addition, you need some uh, toxic uh, solvent to make this material. So this is a, not a satisfying solution. You can take a mesoporous material here, uh, still with chromium, that possess not only a sulfonic group in the, on the linker, but then you load the material with sulfuric acid, because the material can withstand these harsh conditions. In this case, the conductivity becomes even higher, about two Siemens per centimeter. So this is a record conductivity, but this is quite uh, difficult to use this material, because you need to have a strong sulfuric acid uh, when you want to, to use it. And at the same time, you face the same problem as the first case. You have to, uh, you have to produce a toxic chromium material under, uh, let's say, um, very high temperature condition. An alternative approach, this time not using chromium, but using, let's say, more friendly uh, metals, but then non-commercially available ligands, is to make this kind of, uh, let's say, uh, sulfonic uh, uh, zirconium, uh, or let's say, I think it's more zinc here, materials and that bear some uh, sulfonic group here. So in this case, the conductivity is also quite good, but still we are facing the problem of having some expensive linkers uh, and uh, so some complex synthesis conditions. So known solution to date was satisfying. So in, in my team, in collaboration with uh, some colleagues in uh, Montpellier, South of France, we, 
try to investigate systems that are, let's say, more realistic. So based on, a, let's say, a non-toxic cation and using green chemistry. So the first example that we investigated was to uh, functionalize a well-known uh, zirconium carboxylate material of the UIO-66 structure. So based on ZR6 cluster and dicarboxylic acid, but having, in this case, two additional carboxylic group in green that are not connected to the zirconium centers. So you form this structure, that is a macroporous, and the good part is that as the linker is now very soluble, you can make it under reflux in pure water, and the material, despite the fact that you add some polar groups, still keeps the hydrothermal stability required for the application. Now when you look at the properties, so here the conductivity as a function of the temperature, of course, it works better in the presence of humidity. If you don't have any humidity, there's no conductivity, uh, despite the fact that you have these acidic groups. There's not enough protons in the pores, but when you have water, you reach a relatively good conductivity, but one order of magnitude, uh, one or two order of magnitude lower than the toxic material that, that I've shown before. So we were looking for even better candidates, and so our attention was, uh, 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 let's say, we, it led us to the investigation of uh, amino acid-based uh, MOF material. So this is something quite challenging. There's not many examples of uh, MOF based on amino acids. So first of all, why amino acid? Because you have these uh, proton donating groups. Uh, so you have a possibility of having these NH2 groups that are quite basic. And as in, if you use high valence metal cation, you are using acidic conditions. So you can expect to have some protonated groups in the pores and have some excellent uh, proton conductivity uh, uh, properties. But the problem is that the chemistry of uh, this system is uh, more uh, complex than the one of uh, normal polycarboxylic acid because you have uh, sweeterionic molecules. So, and therefore, it will change completely the reactivity of the carboxylic group of the ligand. So this is why uh, the, all the results that were obtained before were obtained with uh, cations that are non-acidic, such as zinc, where you can achieve to make a synthesis at <coughs> pH condition where you uh, NH2 group is uh, protonated. Uh, it's not protonated, sorry. And therefore, you can make it react normally with the zinc. In addition, in some cases, the, 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 the zinc reacts also with the amino group from the amino acid. So these are two uh, examples, one from Rosensky's group in Liverpool and one from Nathaniel Rosie in the US. So in the first case, they call the peptide with zinc, and they obtain structures that are interesting. They have a very nice flexible character, but they are totally non-water stable. And another case was uh, using a combination of uh, adenine and dicarboxylic acid. So it's not a pure amino acid based MOF. It's a combination of the two. And you form this very nice mesoporous structure. But again, the water stability is not uh, sufficient for uh, proton conductivity uh, application. So there was recently also alternative uh, by you considering water stable MOF and then by doing some uh, microwave uh, coupling of uh, this amino acid or peptide in, inside the pores of uh, mesoporous MOF, such as the work of Jérôme Canivet and David Ferrussen in Lyon, in France. So in our lab, we, we, we could discover recently uh, for the first time, uh, let's say, a high valence uh, uh, MOF based on uh, amino acid ligand. Uh, so this is a zirconium uh, material uh, still with the ZR6 oxo cluster. So of course, as the linker is quite short, the porosity is limited. You have only four angstrom pore size and the BET surface area, so it's only 400 square meter per gram. But uh, why did we succeed in getting this sample? It is, uh, I don't know how many uh, dozens of groups that work on the synthesis of, uh, of MOF uh, to make new materials in the world. So there's a fierce competition. But the problem is that uh, if you use normal condition to make this material, you, don't, you get only clear solution. Probably the, due to the very acidic pH of the zirconium salt, you are at pH 0 or 1. And then in this case, the ligand is totally uh, in a sweeter. Uh, you have the protonated amino group. And therefore, it forms probably some complexes in solution, but not a solid. So what the, the, the postdoc in, in the group did is that you use super concentrated conditions, so almost at the limit of the solidity of the ligand. And by using that, probably you force uh, the, the, the precipitation of a solid. So that, that's what happened, in fact, and we could crystallize uh, this material. And of course, uh, the yield is uh, enormous and the space-time yield, so you can produce a lot of material in a few hours. 
and are reflected in water. So this is also a green synthesis. So the structure was solved by uh, using very small crystal uh, at the Proxima 2 beamline at Soleil. So this is sometimes uh, something people do not show uh, too much in the presentation when they are describing MOF structure, but it takes a lot of time to get, let's say, crystalline material or uh, single crystal in the best case or powders. And then to solve the structure can be uh, very time consuming. But in this case, we could benefit from this uh, protein beamline crystallography and, and then to to get a model, and that was confirmed by solid state NMR and modeling. And the thing is that in the, the structure here, the amino group is totally uh, disordered and it's in, in protonated form. And also, you have the zirconium OH group that are also acidic that are present in the pore. So it means that you have a very strong confinement effect of protons in this narrow pore system. So, of course, the stability is the key, uh, uh, let's say, a parameter for uh, proton conductivity material. So, we investigated the stability by X ray refraction and absorption measurement, especially in water, in boiling water. So, this material is stable under hydrothermal condition. If you look at the impact of the treatment on the surface area, then you start to see an increase of the values, especially when you go to acidic condition because you create some ligand defect. This is well documented in this type of uh, chemistry. But as a whole, the, the framework itself is stable. And in terms of property, if you look at the, the conductivity under the dry state, there's no conduc conduction. So the NH3 plus group inside the power are not enough with the zirconium OH group from the framework to ensure a good percolation of the protons. But as soon as you introduce some humidity, then you get very nice uh, value around uh, 10 minus uh, 2 uh, Siemens per centimeter. And uh, what is interesting is that after six days at 90 degrees Celsius, 90 percent of relative humidity, you have no change in the, in the performance and no change in the X-ray diffraction pattern. So this is quite stable. What is the origin of this uh, high value of con conductivity value? So this is not a, a crystal structure from an uh, experiment. This is a calculation by Monte Carlo, performed by Guillaume Morin Montpellier. And in green, you have the chlorine. In blue, you have the amino protonated amino group. And then you have the water molecule in red. And in fact, there's, a, there's an organization of the interaction inside the narrow pore that uh, leads to the very nice uh, percolation of the proton. So we have other materials of this type uh, on our shelves, but I'm not going to, 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 to show them today because of lack of time. Just to explain to you that this material has not the highest conductivity so far in terms of proton conductivity, but it is almost close, uh, the same value as the uh, nafion, the commercial polymer, and, but it is much easier and much cheaper and to make uh, than the, the cr toxic chromium material that were uh, reported before. And so the next step, that's what we are doing in our lab, is to make nanoparticles of uh, this MOF and try to make some uh, mixed matrix membrane with some polymers. Uh, so this is an example not with uh, this zirconium MOF, but that we obtained uh, in, uh, recently with an aluminium carboxylate MOF and a 6 sda dam uh, polymer for CO2 capture. So now I will turn to the second type of application, so heat reallocation, so still related to water absorption. So this is just the context, as you know, excessive energy consumption in the world. Of course, greenhouse gas emission, and also people are looking for alternative way of, let's say, producing or let's say recovering uh, energy uh, from, uh, let's say, the different industrial processes. So in our case, we are interested in uh, solar thermal application. So uh, in order to, let's say, recover the heat that one produced in excess during summer, and then to use it in winter time. So this is based simply on absorption desorption of water. As you all know, absorption is exothermic, desorption is endothermic. So porous solid are a good material to, let's say, delay the, the recovery of the heat by adsorption desorption. So this is something known for decades with, uh, for instance, zeolite or aluminophosphate. And then in this case, you have short-term or long-term application. Short-term are heat pump, for instance, chillers, and long-term are seasonal uh, heat storage. And if you look now, this is just a simplistic representation of the advantages and disadvantages of porous sorbent for this type of application. So in organic material, they are very stable, they are uh, commercialized, uh, but the sorption capacity due to the pore volume is limited. And in some cases, especially with cationic zeolite, you need high regeneration temperature. 
So the, some of these materials are already used for EPOM, for instance, uh, seeing coalinophosphate SAPO34. And when you look at MOF, you can have some higher sorption capacity, but also you can tune the hydrophilic hydrophilic balance, which can be very imp important because all these applications have different conditions. And in addition, in most cases, you have a low, uh, you have a lower uh, t regeneration temperature. And then, in some cases, some of have been shown to be stable for hundreds or thousands of cycles of absorption desorption of water. So you can achieve some good stability for this application. So I show you just one example of three MOF materials that have different hydrophilic hydrophobic uh, characters. So from very uh, from hydrophilic on the left to more hydrophobic on the right. So you see that the the, 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 let's say the pressure at which you absorb water varies from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5, for instance. And as I said before, each application of each allocation has different condition. It's very specific. So it means that it will never find a MOF sorbent or a zeolite that will be useful for all these type of applications. So you need to change the, the sorbent each time. So if you consider solar thermal application, so this is what happens in a house when you have this, uh, uh, let's say, copper or aluminum panel on the roof, and then you have 80 degrees during summer time. And then you will use this extra heat by exchanger and to dissolve water from a salt or water from a porous salmon. And then during winter time, when the temperature is much lower, but then much more humid, then you will reabsorb water and create some hot water. And what is considered from the practical application is currently salt, like calcium chloride, but salt are difficult to recycle. They can recrystallize and kinetics are slow. Or some people try to embed the salt into porous matrix, such as silica gel. So uh, if you look at uh, physisorption, so only the MOF itself, in this case, you need to absorb and dissolve at the same pressure of water, but between 30 and 80 degrees Celsius. So you need something that is very hydrophilic, in fact. And if you look at the current MOF, no one was satisfying for this application. So what we did in our lab, we designed uh, a new aluminum carboxylate material uh, called U160. Uh, so this is a macroporous uh, 1D pore system material with a surface area of 1,100 square meter per gram. And it has a 6 angstrom pore size and it is based on these cis chains of corner sharing uh, metal octahedra. And the good point also is that this MOF is based from a bio-derived ligand, ferrine dicarboxylic acid that is produced from the biomass and currently scaled up at the hundreds of thousands ton scale, that's the target objective, by BASF. So it will replace in the future normally terephthalic acid to produce plastic bottle. And uh, because the linker is short and quite hydrophilic, we can also do the synthesis under green condition. And the material is hydrothermally stable. Here, you look at the water sorption isotherm in red of the new material and compare that with the same material but using a purely aromatic ligand, so CO10, and you can see a shift of the position of the assortion, a step from 0.2 to 0.1. So you increase uh, a lot the hydrophilic character of the material. And if you look at the assortion desorption of water, this is cyclable, there's no loss of capacity. And uh, we, uh, a colleague from the Institute of Solar Energy in Fraguer in Germany investigated this material during 2,000 cycles and is, he has observed only less than 2% of uh, loss of capacity uh, during the cycling. So this is a very stable material. And what is the reason of this increased hydrophilic character? So this is calculation done by my colleague in Montpellier. So in fact, here you compare the, 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 our material on the left with the, uh, the isostructural material with the aromatic, purely aromatic uh, ligand, uh, isophthalic acid. And in fact, in this case, there's a combination of two effects. The first one is that uh, because the linker is a slightly smaller than the previous one, you have a better accessibility to the OH group from the inorganic chains. And in addition, you have an oxygen group in the linker that creates a secondary uh, hydrophilic absorption site uh, in this type of matter. So this is combination of these two effects that explain the uh, increased hydrophilic character. Now if you look at the performance and you compare with uh, benchmark materials, so MOF or silica or SAPO34, and then you consider three types of condition. I'm not going into too much into the detail, but you have what they call lift one, two, three, which correspond to different type of application. Lift one is heat pump, hydrophilic condition, and then uh, you go to other application by lift two, lift three, uh, where you need material that absorb water at higher pressure, so less hydrophilic material. 
and you see the performance uh, here for the, the heat pump condition, but these are quite similar to the solar thermal application condition. You see that the E160 material has almost the, the same performance, a little bit higher, but comparable to the one of the commercial sorbonne. It doesn't mean that at the end it will replace SAPO 34, but it means that a MOF material can be as good, as efficient, at this stage at least, as a commercial inorganic porous solid. So of course, the next step was to scale up the material, so we could do at uh, this time, uh, hundreds of grams of this sample uh, by optimizing the synthesis, replacing chlorine by acetate, and then increasing the concentration, getting very high space-time yield. And now we can produce in one pot uh, kilos of this material in a 30 liter reactor. And this material can be shaped with some inorganic binders. So here it was done by colleagues in Korea, so with silica solution. And the good point is that the mechanical stability was good, and then only 5% loss of porosity, which corresponds to the binder. And these granules were then used by colleagues in Belgium for open system lab scale prototypes. So it means that simply you have a column where you have your shape material and then you measure, you, you increase, you in, expose the material to some uh, at 30 degrees Celsius with some uh, water and then you will desorb at 80 degrees Celsius and you measure the input and output air temperature to determine the thermal power curve and then at the end the energy storage capacity. So this is a thermal uh, heat power profile that you get. So you go from room temperature to almost 90 degrees Celsius in the column, and then slowly it decreases. And you consider what is interesting here is the range where the temperature of the water is above 30 degrees Celsius, because you need to take a shower. So uh, that's uh, the, the range of uh, hot water production that was obtained with this matter. Of course, this is a first proof of concept. It could be optimized, but now this material is considered by many researchers in the world for different applications where you have this uh, type of uh, conditions. And we'll finish with a very last example, saying that we can also uh, try to uh, use uh, uh, MOF material for a cooling uh, system. So in this case, so on the, the right, don't be afraid, I'm going to explain you in detail this uh, engineering uh, scheme. But let's say that for a, uh, let's say a cooling system, you need at some point to regenerate at temperature below 65 degrees Celsius. So this is very challenging because if you want to absorb a lot of water, you need hydrophilic material, but you want to dissolve at low uh, temperature. So this is quite contradictory, I would say. So uh, the, the problem is that uh, there's, uh, the, the challenge is to get some stable hydrophilic material with uh, low regeneration temperature. And uh, I will pass on the details, but we could find one of these materials in our lab that was discovered uh, re recently. So this is a zirconium tetracarboxylate material this time. Why a tetracarboxylate? Because when you have four carboxylate groups, it is more stable than when you have three or two, simply. Um, and this is a bimodal pore system material with uh, six and 13 angstrom pore size. And we could produce this, uh, the sample uh, under solvent thermal condition, but not using DMF, so using, uh, for instance, formic acid. And this is an easy scalable uh, material with a cheap ligand. And this is a material that has an exceptional uh, chemical stability, not only under boiling water, but on, under a very acidic condition. But interesting point here on the left, you see the assorption isotherm. You have um, a moderate hydrophilic character. You have an assorption at 0 0.2 partial pressure of water. And this is quite cyclable after a few dozen cycles. You do not lose capacity. And uh, now, if you look at, you compare this material with the benchmark material, so either MOF or the SAPO 34 material, you have something that uh, clearly in a red, this is our new material. This is not as hydrophilic as uh, the SAPO 34 silico phosphate or the very hydrophilic Mi160 material. And, um, but now, if you look at the temperature, the, uh, the efficiency uh, defined by a coefficient of performance, COP, as a function of the desorption temperature of water, you see in red that our material has the highest performance under the temperature of desorption below 63 degrees Celsius. So this is uh, something that uh, is uh, very promising. Actually, we're trying to, to scale up uh, and uh, go to the next step with prototype with this type of material. But they say that this material could outperform for this type of application, the commercial uh, material. And why do we have such uh, a mechanism, in fact? Um, if you look at the two pores uh, of this material, you see that 
you have the micropores on the left and the uh, super micropores, uh, super, let's say the mac super micropores which correspond to pore size between 10 and 20 angstrom, here in this case 30 angstrom. And of course the first pores on the left are macroporous uh, 6 angstrom, so if you look here at the absorption isotherm, they are already occupied at a very low pressure, but they are not useful for this type of application because you do not dissolve under vacuum. So only the second step of absorption is useful. <coughs> And the second step corresponds to these very large pores, in fact. And the fact, if you compare to the previous case where you had a 6 angstrom pore size, you go to 13 angstrom, you have more or less the same hydrophilic character on the walls, but as the pore size has increased, the confinement effect has decreased, and then this explains why you have a lower desorption temperature. So I would like to just finish by uh, acknowledging the, the, the people that have done uh, the job here. So basically, uh, the, the, the PhD and postdoc, uh, Su Jing Wang and Anastasia Pamlakova, that did most of the job. Uh, and then my, my colleagues from Institut Lavoisier for, and uh, Institut of Matteo Poro now in Paris for the, the structure solution and uh, the scale up. Uh, my colleagues from uh, Montpellier, Guillaume Morin, and his team for the calculation and the proton conductivity measurement. And then William Shepard for the Proxima 2 uh, beamline structure solution. And my colleagues from Korea, uh, Netherlands, and Belgium for the different uh, water sorption tests. Thank you for your attention.